Um, so I'm Vabhav. I developed the optimization.jl package. I am a, a grad student at MIT right now. So basically this talk, I aim to uh, cover some of the motivation of why optimization.jl exists. That has been a question, I guess, I've come up with an answer for after a bit of soul searching over the last year. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then I'll just tell you what have been like the recent development, some of the interface changes and uh, new features that are available. Cool. So like what are we talking about here? I, I expect a lot of you will already know this. This will be boring. But basically, we are talking about optimization problems, which is you know this generic uh, way of describing a lot, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, writing out a lot of applied mathematics, which is you want a, a, a mini, you want a, a basically a minimizer for a function that you define, uh, which also needs to respect some set of constraints. Cool. How can you do that? Well, you have these things called oracles that you can use that basically tell you more about the problem. They tell you about uh, what the parameter space looks like and what the the thing that you're interested in, like the loss function, uh, looks like over your space. Uh, it could be like a, a you know any kind of a manifold or like the Euclidean space. Um, so, so yeah, basically these, uh, the definition of these oracles can change a little bit depending on what kind of a space you are on. Um, so how do people do that on computers? Well, there's like a ton of really great software that exists for uh, optimization, and especially in Julia, like Jump is probably like one of the most successful projects that we have. Um, and you know, there's like other uh, ones that are really great as well. But what I would like to sort of point out here is like th there have been typically two uh, approaches to building uh, 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 optimization software. One has been this algebraic approach where you set out uh, by defining your problem explicitly. You know, you, these tend to be people with a, a good training in optimization. They know exactly what they are doing. They, they are able to write out, you know, a lot of details uh, about their problem. So that's more like the structured optimization perspective. But then you also have people, you know, uh, doing machine learning and where you basically say, this is my data, this is my loss function. Let's stochastic gradient go brr, right? But uh, so those, those softwares also exist uh, very separate from each other. You can't really do, uh, you know, machine learning in jump, for example. Well, you could, but even they don't really encourage that. So the idea here is that can we, you know, try to unify these two approaches to building software for optimization. And the other thing that sort of plays uh, a role here is this model-centric uh, API versus, you know, uh, Oracle-centric API, which I would also sort of tie in with the two approaches I talked about uh, before. The model sort of APIs tend to be more dominant in the algebraic software, and, you know, these Oracle APIs are like the typical machine learning uh, libraries that you use. And I've listed out a bunch of examples of uh, these uh, kinds of APIs that are available. So what does optimization.jl offer? Well, uh, the aim is to sort of extend this uh, uh, overarching goal of SciML, where we are trying to build symbolic numeric uh, tools and be able to use, you know, as, as uh, depending on your use case, and also to sort of uh, improve each other, right? Like, there's a lot of things that you should be doing algebraically, and there's a lot of things that you should be doing numerically always. But mixing them can really help you. So optimization.jl basically has two interfaces. One is like the functional interface, which is the Oracle-based APIs that I was talking about before, and the algebraic interface through modeling toolkit. Um, this is just like, you know, a bunch, uh, sort of a pseudocode to explain what that looks like. And uh, yeah, so this this basically has been like the uh, enabler for a bunch of development that I'll talk about next. I'll start off with like uh, something you might not care too much about. It's kind of internal, but basically now we have out of out of place optimization functions supported. What does this do? Well, it helps you be able to write. Uh, you know, it helps you avoid a lot of like scalar indexing and stuff like that. So you can actually start thinking about uh, writing out oracles for GPUs, which is not, it's, it's tough. Uh, anyone who has worked with uh, 
GPUs uh, and AD tools will know that it's it doesn't always work, right? And uh, yeah. And then we have recently added uh, a native, well, I wouldn't call it native because the actual implementation is in Fortran, but uh, we have this LBFGS uh, uh, optimization solver now available right out of optimization.gl. I have also implemented an augmented Lagrangian over it to be able to handle uh, you know, just generic uh, nonlinear constraint problems. I can quickly show you an example of that. What does the, so basically it helps you cut down on the number. So one of the issues that used to be was because of all these solver wrappers, right? You can end up having to like load six packages just to run a simple optimization problem. But now I can just load optimization and an AD package, and then I can just use LBFGS to actually get pretty good results. And I, I actually believe like the LBFGSB implementation that we have wrapped is actually like one of the most uh, uh, robust uh, b because of its lines are like one of the most robust uh, optimizers I've used. So yeah, I hope you guys think that too. Uh, this is just the API I showed in the code. Then we have actually added support for uh, ensemble problem. If you are a SciML user, you know ensemble problem is this way of uh, being able to run copies of the same problem using uh, different uh, initializations. Uh, for our context, like in optimization, it would be like different initializations. Why can that be useful? Well, when you are in a low, low dimensional setting, it can actually be pretty uh, pretty effective to just uh, use like a multi-start optimization technique. So I'll just show you a quick example. Uh, again, I'm still using the Rosenbrock function, but now I'm using like BFGS from Optim, and I'm just uh, going to run it for five iterations. So you see, I get you know an error of around like 0.25. But if I like now, I'm just like literally randomly sampling on the space and initializing four different initial points, and by doing that, I can like actually get uh, you know like almost a, what is it, hundred times lower objective for the same number of iterations. So for low dimensional cases, this can be very useful. Uh, we have you know new wrapper solvers for Prima and Manopt. Uh, Prima is this uh, Powell's uh, derivative-free methods and uh, Manopt is optimization on manifolds. Uh, so related to that, uh, we have recently uh, added a, a sort of a middle layer in optimization base that can allow you to do some structural analysis on problems. And this structural analysis is basically the discipline convex programming and uh, this novel. Uh, so I, we recently put out a preprint uh, with some, uh, well, I put out a preprint uh, with some collaborators from Harvard. Uh, called Disciplined Geodesic Convex Programming, which is extending this idea of Disciplined Convex Programming to man, uh, manifold optimization problems. It's only limited to symmetric positive definite manifold with the canonical affine invariant metric. Uh, so it's very limited, but I think it's a, a, a useful direction to start thinking about because it actually helps you, uh, you know, make all those guarantees about global optimality for problems that appear to be non-convex uh, non in the Euclidean setting, but uh, so. I hope you can take a look at the paper and find it useful. I have the code for that just to show you what this looks like. And this is like just a regular optimization problem. It's tri pretty trivial to see that it's uh, convex. It's just the sum of exponential and square. But now when I set structural analysis equal to true in the optimization problem and run the solver, it actually prints out uh, a certificate of its uh, convexity. And uh, you know, if you have a successful first order convergence on a convex problem, you know that it's the global optima. And uh, then you can actually do this similarly for a manifold optimization problem. Here I'm do uh, doing a, this, this problem is called as the Karcher mean problem. It's basically trying to find the uh, geometric mean of symmetric positive definite matrices. It's known to be non-convex in the Euclidean setting, but uh, I can basically use the same uh, uh, infrastructure I was using before, set structural analysis equal to true, and pass up the manifold, the symmetric positive manifold that I'm defining the problem on. And uh, now, so you can see that it's, uh, you know, it has a unknown curvature, which kind of, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's non-convex, but it's basically mean that, you know, you can't recognize the structure using discipline convex programming. But as you can see, it 
prints out that it's geodesically convex, so that can be useful in some problems, especially in like you know statistical estimators tend to use log determinant, for example. Uh, so that can be useful. So that's it. There's a bunch of future work that needs to be done, uh, <laughs> like always. Uh, and so I've just listed out a few bullet points I could think of. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.